Shalom, giving all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakahakdash. Double honor to the elders of the great millstone who told me this truth. A sincere Shalom, Lapakarium, Shah, Yashra, that's peace to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. This is um, Prepper Nation here, YouTube handle that I follow. I got this, I uh, heard about this guy last year from uh, the elder Malcolm from Chicago, you know. Um, and I've been following him ever since, you know. Yep, he gets in, he gets in. You know, I actually like his opinion. <clears throat> you know, um, he gives about a 15, 20 minute um, quick segment every morning, about five days a week. You know, kind of basing it on the mindset of your average modern day prepper. And you get to see the thinking, the thinking of... Um, your average American, not just your six pack Joe type of guy, but the guy that's kind of uh, treading the fence a little bit, man. He think he knows a little something. They may have a glimmer of hope, but they see their world shattering before them. So it's like it's very hopeless. So they're really fighting for the day after tomorrow, meaning the survival in a sense of the Walking Dead or the Book of Eli. This, that's what this guy is right here you know at least that's what he reminds me of so the way his mind think you get to see the real paranoia for those um babylonians who know a little bit of what's going on but but can't touch it you know he has a lot of subscribers and they you know they call they leave their opinions you know he gets in but this segment here is based on the draft now he's going to bring up something about redacted. We're going to listen to a, uh, this video because this draft is about to happen, you know. And the, and the, I, I can see the number one reason when I was listening and then checking it out myself is Congress is going to save about fifteen to thirty thousand dollars a year drafting, opposed to recruiting. It takes a lot to recruit and train than it will to actually draft. And force people in. Now we know this this is biblical prophecy here we're looking at. And we're gonna get into them scripts. You understand? This is biblical prophecy. So yes, this draft is gonna happen. So your average token, two-third Babylonian, Edomite Babylonian, Elam, Hamite, Japhet, whoever's here in Babylon, you got children between the ages of 17 up to 35, prepared to receive these slips. Because these slips are coming out You can't fight the third world's war Without boots on the ground And we know the majority of these boots Are going down to the Middle East You're going down to the Middle East To be flattened And part of the saw you down there Now they're going to have to send Some soldiers over to China Some soldiers over to uh, Ukraine But the bulk Of the Northern American army Will be sent down to the Middle East Towards the Euphrates in the Red Sea. So let's check this out. The inevitability of a draft here in the United States of America, military draft. Okay, so yesterday redacted, um, they put out a podcast and they said, you know, the U.S. is considering a military draft. And I said, oh, I I'm tuning in on this one. Sometimes. I watch. Sometimes I'm a little too busy. I say I'm tuning in. And um, this is actually coming from military.com is what they're referencing in the podcast. And I will link that down below the video as well, okay, where it says Intel. So it's being pitched to Congress as a cost saver. So the way things are set up now when you, um, when you are recruiting somebody brand new into the armed forces, it costs around $15,000 to get that person into the armed forces to convince them to come and all of this stuff to go through the motions. Then once they're there, it, it takes another 50000 or so to get them battle ready on average. And they're saying that it's costing the government a ton of money. It would be cheaper if we just instituted a draft. We could cut out so many $15,000 at a time. I think they said... The government would save a few billion every year just by forcing people to do it. Um, 
And they go on in this podcast yesterday on Redacted to say, what are we fighting for exactly? And I thought that that was an excellent, excellent question. And we got the answers. You're fighting because of the prophecies. The Lord tell you in Joel, Joel 3 and 9, prepare war. Beat your plowshares into these weapons of war. Instead of spending your money on agriculture, feeding, you're going to spend your money on nuclear arms. You're going to spend your money on drones. You're going to spend your money on Abrams tanks. You're going to spend your money on fighter jets. You're going to invest into the Space Force because we're going into this war. This is all probably, but, but they don't know this now. But they know that this is happening. It's like, like it's magnetic. It's, it's, it's pulling and they can't stop it. What are we fighting for? People that are being sent to, even now, National Guards men and women that are being sent to Poland um, to prepare for the possibility of war versus Russia in Europe. What exactly are they fighting for? Are they fighting for the freedom of Ukraine? Are they fighting to protect Zelensky? Are they fighting because we don't like Russia? Why are we in Europe in the first place? Why are we getting ready to fight? Uh, and again, I thought that was an excellent question because we were just talking yesterday about World War III. Spoiler alert, probably four hours after we dropped that video yesterday morning, we on, which is the same channel I was telling you about, about out of India, they ran a segment where they pretty much are saying it's inevitable. They were saying the same thing we were, but we beat them by four hours or so. Yeah, why is it inevitable? Once again, we're going to get right back here. <clears throat> Let's get the prophecy. Prophecy. All this is written. It's been written because the Lord is bringing in his kingdom. You're looking at the kingdom of heaven being built right in front of your face. This is Revelations 11, verse uh, 14. It says, The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly so you got all these nations being prepared if they're preparing for this we in that great day that great day this is um revelation 16 and 12 and the sixth angel poured out his vow a vow you is that's like a little jar where you get your blood pulled in the, the this angel had these vows okay so it says Upon the great rivers Euphrates. Now, this, this is an ancient river that kept its name today. The Euphrates and the, and the Tigris. They still got the ancient name because that's biblical, biblical prophecy. Biblical prophecy is taking place. And we know that this is down in the Middle East. And the waters thereof was dried up. So you look at the Euphrates. It's been dry for some time now. And it's so dry that they found tunnels. Tunnels. Like special unique uh, lasers and design and cuttings down at the bottom of that damn river, man. It says that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Prepared for what? Prepared for war. That's what we going into. Prophecy, man. Uh, I don't know how the time differences and stuff with India without looking though. But there's only one thing missing for the United States when it comes to World War III and that's boots on the ground and we don't have enough boots on the ground. So not only is a draft possible but if we fight World War III I think it's extremely likely that we are going to see some sort of draft instituted um, because we already know about the crazy enlistment shortfalls i i believe this year they're projecting every single branch except for the u.s marines they're going to have significant shortfalls 20 25 30 percent below the expected number people just aren't interested the marines i think they were the only one that said hey we're going to make our goal but we're go it's going to be a crazy struggle just to get there um now you see what's going so, on why because Yahabashimi Abashah has turned this place into women, man. Look at the American military. It's saddening. The obesity, the transformers in the military. You can go to the military 
and have your um your 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 wiring reset and they'll pay for it and that's prophecy that's the lord breaking this place you think the american military is ready for war with russia i mean battle ready the twerking that you see from the women you know you know all the let's not uh forget how divided and, and, and racist the American military is. I hear all the stories. I work, I work around some of these guys. They tell me about how the black woman is being raped and molested up there. And those reports are not going out. And there's uh, sergeants and generals up for lawsuit and all kind of rape charges, man. And abuse and murders. This place is divided. Matter of fact, before we get this, you know, you're looking at a, a very divided kingdom. So even with this military, what do you think people are going to do when they get that slip? You think they're going to go? No, they're going to opt out the prison. So the Lord's going to draw these people into these nuclear bombs. You're going to have no choice. This, this shall be fought with fuel of fire. Matthews 12 and 25. And Yahweh knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And look at this here. The gender wars. Male against female, all that's happening in the, in the American military, man. And you think Russia and China rolling like that? Iran, North Korea, they see the whore is very weak right now. Very weak. And that's the way the Lord got it. So you're going to have to skip the traditional way of fighting. This is Isaiah um, 9 and 6. And you're going to have to go right into the missiles. You're going to have to kick it up right into the missiles because this kingdom is divided. It's, it's brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And this is a divided house, to say the least, man. This is a divided house. This is uh, Jeremiah 50, verse, verse 30. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They don't want to fight. Like he said, they're going to be short. I forget what percentage he said. You know, the only one that's going to make it is maybe the Marines. You know, these Edomites used to line up, you know, for war a uh, hundred years ago. But this is not the same Edomite, man. These men are walking around 30 years old in pajama pants, man, playing video games. You know, eating, living off Popeyes, the mind frame. Of, of the people in Babylon. It's not there. Your average American is very comfortable right now. They're not expecting a draft to happen. How do you think the public's going to handle this? The rich going to try to flee to Canada, flee to the South. A lot of people from, from other countries, they're going to grab their children, race back to their country. Who's going to be left here? You Jakes, you Negroes, Hispanics. Your children going to go. That's going to be part of Jacob's trouble. Your average white American, if you don't have money to get out of here, you're going to be left here. So it says the mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holes. Their might have failed. They became as women. That's what we're looking at now. These masculine men are now soft, docile. You know, the woman has taken the lead role and that's prophecy too. It's not like you women are doing something better. It's just the Lord made, made this happen. Because the hands are going to be so weak that you're going to have to go right into the bombs, man. This is not going to be a, 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 a guerrilla warfare takeover. No. Now, America will be occupied. It's going to be boots on the ground here from these other countries. Real soon. Martial law is coming here. Real soon. Because that's, I, I'll tell you one day, they might not want to go overseas to go to war, which a lot of them will. But one day they're not going to stand is you taking their video games and their sausages and their pizza from them. They'll rebel. It's going to be a civil war here from taking their internet <laughs> and taking their lights from them. That's when you're going to see these Babylonians raise up here. So it's going to be some form of martial law called here. So it says, their might have failed. They became as women.
They have burnt her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. One post shall run to meet another and one messenger to meet another to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end and that the passengers are stopped. See, this is the unwalled villages, man. You know, don't forget two weeks ago, they gave that activation to the National Guard. All National Guard. If you got family members in the National Guard, it's getting hectic. Everybody's on high alert. And what it is going to be taken. We don't know if it's going to be New York City, you know, uh, the Bay Area, Florida. We don't know. But we wait and we wait because we know these prophecies, we have a more sure word of prophecy. It says Babylon, that his city is taken, okay, uh, 32, and that the passengers are stopped, and that the reeds that they have burnt with fire, and the men of war are frightened. So these warrior men, they ain't going to be down with this. They ain't going to be scared. It is what it is, but you can't fight a war without soldiers not a world war at least you can fight you know conflicts and stuff with technology not to get off on a tangent here but i think that's part of america's problem we fought so many conflicts indirectly and we rely so heavily on technology that we've gotten used to this idea of we don't need to put many boots on the ground and that's not how it's going to play out for world war three i can promise you so again the military.com article that I will link down below is called We Need a Limited Military Draft. And this is the idea that's being pitched to Congress. And there are a handful of congressmen and women that are supportive of this. Not enough to make it happen just yet, but this is the idea. The United States would recruit. Use Kayak's uh, filters to search coming. only the flights you actually want to take. Download the Kayak app now. How many subscriptions are you paying for? Rocket Money, find sneaky or forgotten subscriptions. For the first 11 months of the physical year, like normal, you know, vans showing up at your local fairs, you've got your enlistment offices and malls and things. And then the 12th month of every year, if there's uh, a recruitment shortfall, you know, if we're projected to be 30,000 behind in the U.S. Army, just as an example, then they would uh, use the selective service and draft 30,000 people, uh, citizens here into the U.S. Army. And I think what's going on is the endless wars model that we were just talking about this week. It's beginning to break down. It's not working the same way it was in the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s. And it's crazy because technically, to hear it told by our government, we're at a time of peace here in the United States. And I can't remember the draft ever being instituted during a time of peace. It always happens during a time of war. So I think they're lying about that as well. Of course. As why? I because World War Three has started already. It's only peace to the, you know, the clone Tyrones walking around here. You know, it hasn't hit your mainstream yet. But we're in the warm part of this war. The cold part is over. We're in the warm part. Headed towards the heated part. But the heated part don't pop off until this MOTB gets implemented, man. Because it's going to happen like that. So fast. People heads are going to spin. What is this grain of rice? What are they saying? I got to put something in my body. What is going on? The next thing you know, they call it for the draft. They call it for the war. This going to start the ruckus, man. So, yeah, they got these people thinking that they're in a time of peace. But you're not in a time of peace. What the Lord said, man. Hey, when they say peace and safety, there's sudden destruction, man. And that's what's going to happen. Sudden destruction is upon these Babylonians. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3. For when they shall say peace and safety. Right now it's Friday. You know, payday people out. You know, planning it. You know, while these things are happening behind the scenes. They don't know that they call it for the draft. They don't know that it, over there in Poland they fighting right now. 
They rush it over National Guard soldiers on Poland's border. That's NATO. NATO on sit drone attacks to Moscow the other day. This thing is heating up. The World Economic Forum called for what? They want that CBDC up under your skin. So we ain't in a time of peace. It's just that they don't see it yet. For when they shall say peace is safety, this sudden destruction coming upon them as upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So that's where we at, man. This is a delusion, a smoke screen, right? A simulation set up to catch them in a trick bag because the Lord's going to catch a lot of these people. Where we going? Uh, I'm going to end it here. Isle of Jesus uh, acting up right now. This is Joel's 2 verse 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. That's that. That's the. This is the draft here. You know, they're going to get a lot of people. A lot of people going to, you know, volunteer the Lord, going to sprinkle his spirit on them. They're going to feel gun ho. You know, a lot of your uh, die hard, you know, thick burgundy blood Americans. You know, my father died for this country. Yeah, you're, you're going to be moved far off. This is the prophecy. The Northern Army. It will drive him into a land barren and desolate. Where? Down there towards uh, Saudi Arabia, man. Y'all going down there. You're going down there. With his face toward the East Sea, which is the Euphrates. Meaning you're going to be facing you because you're going towards the East. It is hinder parts toward the uttermost sea, which is the Red Sea, which is behind. Because remember that Euphrates is part of prophecy, man. This is this is this is you know. So a lot is centered around that uh, that sea there. You know, it says. Uh, let me see here. So. Uh, let me see. This is uh, Revelations 9 and uh, 14. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So you got these angels down there working up, working it up, preparing these armies. The angels are working right now. Overtime, baby. And a lot is stirring up for this war that's going to take place in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the War of Armageddon. It's going to, it's going to start down there. The least of the flock shall draw them out. And you look at that hardcore prophecy right now, straight, no chaser, man. <laughs> it's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful time to be alive, man. So it says, but I will move off far from you, the northern army, and will drive them into a land barren and desolate with his face towards the toward the east sea and its hinder parts toward the uttermost sea and his state shall come up hold on a second hold on a second okay and his ill savor shall come up because he have done great things so that's what we watching right now man a great time of prophecy unfolding right before our eyes giving all praise and honor to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah Bashim, Rukaha Kudash Shalom.